Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the etiopathogenesis of preeclampsia. But before we do that, let's answer the question in our previous session. That is, why is it important to treat all opportunistic infection prior to starting antiretroviral therapy in an HIV infected patient? The answer it is to prevent what we call immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome also known as immune restoration disease also simply known as immune reconstitution syndrome it is popularly known as iris and iris is defined as the paradoxical clinical worsening of a known condition or the presence of a new condition following the initiation of anti retroviral therapy in an hiv infected patient resulting in the restoration of immunity to specific infectious and non-infectious antigens. Congratulations to all those who got it right. Now let's move on to today's topic, that is the etiopathogenesis of preeclampsia. So we are going to look at three mechanisms. We'll start first by looking at the placentation theory. So with that, you should know that in normal pregnancy, there are two waves of trophoblast invasion that is the first wave will occur at 10 to 12 weeks of gestation and the second wave will occur at 16 to 18 weeks of gestation when that happens the invading cytotrophoblast migrate through the site of implantation and invade the decidua tenica media of the maternal spiral arteries replacing their endothelium that is by causing the transformation of the spiral arteries from small muscular arteries to large capacitance low resistance blood vessels enabling adequate blood flow and that process is what we call pseudo vascularization and when that happens the maternal spiral artery which is small and muscular here before the waves of invasion becomes large capacitance low resistance blood vessel meaning that the spiral artery after pseudo vascularization would assume the funnel shaped so the spiral arteries become funnel shaped after the waves of invasion that is after the second wave of invasion meaning the spiral arteries that's the maternal spiral arteries would assume a funnel shaped form the maternal spiral arteries after pseudo vascularization will become what funnel shape and that would enable adequate blood flow and that process where the endothelium of the spiral arteries become replaced as a result of the invasion of the cytotrophoblast is what we call pseudo vascularization so you can see small muscular before the waves of invasion becoming final shape that is large capacitance low resistance blood vessels in the small muscular the resistance is very high but in the large capacitance the resistance is very low and that is brought about by the pseudo vascularization okay so that would be the normal physiology in pregnancy but how does this culminate into the development of preeclampsia this when it does not take place that is in the case of incomplete invasion of the cytotrophoblast causes the maternal spiral arteries that is small and muscular in form to remain intact they will remain intact they will remain intact and if they remain intact what are we going to have when they are intact it will cause intense vasospasm and when there's intense vasospasm means that the blood vessels become narrow they will become constricted and if they are constricted what will happen to the resistance the resistance will what increase and when the vascular resistance is increased what do you expect for the blood pressure the blood pressure will increase giving us what hypertension it will increase giving us hypertension and with time the hypoxic injury to the glomerular filtration barrier would give rise to proteinuria and if you have 
hypoxy injury of the glomerular filtration barrier what is going to happen it means that the podocytes and their food processes will become a phase opening up the glomerular filtration barrier for high molecular weight proteins to escape without being filtered and that would give rise to proteinuria and in our previous series when we have hypertension plus proteinuria clinically with or without pathological edema we call that preeclampsia so this theory of placentation would give rise to preeclampsia i believe we've learned something interesting let's move ahead and look at the second mechanism for the second mechanism we are looking at the imbalance between the angiogenic factors such as we have the vascular endothelium growth factor and the placental growth factor and the anti-angiogenic factors and the anti-angiogenic factors we have the soluble fms like tyrosine receptor the soluble fms like tyrosine receptor which is written as sflt and also the soluble endoglin which is written as seng when that happens we are going to have the angiogenic factors being in excess angiogenic factors being in excess and the anti-angiogenic factors being in what a downgrade so we are having an up regulation so we are having an up regulation of the angiogenic factors and a down regulation of the anti-angiogenic factors what would that give us it will make the blood vessels become narrow because the cells here will, will grow in size due to the effect of the angiogenic factors so at the end of the day we are going to have the spiral arteries becoming narrow and when the spiral arteries become narrow the vascular resistance increases and if it increases what will happen there will be hypertension so that can give rise to preeclampsia as well then finally the last mechanism is going to be the immunological mechanism where there is an upregulation of the t helper one cells which is precipitated by an extreme activation of leukocytes in the maternal circulation an upregulation of the t helper one cells precipitated by an upstream activation of leukocytes in the maternal circulation can also give rise to preeclampsia that makes up for the etiopathogenesis of preeclampsia i believe we've learned something new today but before we end the lesson i have a question for you and this question is what are the indications for immediate delivery in severe preeclampsia leave your answers in the comment section kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel like share and also comment the next concept you would like to see in my next tutorial session my name is Dr. Dell, and once again, this is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye.